In other news, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in the United States to discuss defence, security and energy with President Obama. Modi was banned from entering the country in 2005. He'll address a joint meeting of the US Congress. It's the seventh time the two leaders have met since Modi became Prime Minister in 2014. The United States is Modi's fourth leg of a five-nation tour. Well, let's take a closer look at the two countries' commercial ties. Well, trade between India and the US has jumped from $60 billion to more than $107 billion uh, since 2009. Both countries are also boosting foreign direct investment in each other's economies. The United States has become one of India's largest defence suppliers, selling nearly $14 billion of military hardware in recent years. Both countries have agreed to work together to safeguard strategic interests like freedom of navigation. That includes in the South China Sea, where tensions with China have increased. Well, let's get more on the significance of Modi's trip to the United States from Sabrata Mitra, the director of the Institute of South Asian Studies, NUS. Thank you very much uh, for your time. So why is Modi visiting the United States then? What are some of the key policies and deals that he'll be looking to push through? Well, first and foremost, you have already shown the trade and security relations between these two large democracies is on the upswing. The Modi visit has, number one, on its agenda, the strengthening of this relationship, particularly by strengthening the civil nuclear cooperation deal that was first signed in 2006, which has been languishing because of, of some liability laws in India. Modi wants to straighten that up and in the process also secure American support for Indian membership of the nuclear supply group. And while he's at it, he will surely try to increase the number of H-1B visas to Indian technicians working in uh, the United States. There are, of course, other reasons. The signal to the two million uh, Americans of Indian origin, you have seen two of them already uh, in your program, uh, Mr. Richard Varma, the American ambassador to India, and Nisha Vishal, the assistant secretary of state for Central and South Asia. These Indian diaspora in the United States is one of the strongest supporters of Narendra Modi. The visit is also a signal to them that he remains connected and committed to these Indians uh, in the United States. Modi's also going to address Congress. I mean, what's the significance of that, especially considering that he was once banned from even entering America? The most significant thing about it is symbolic. In 2005, the American Congress had taken the lead in denying Mr. Modi a visa because of his um, apparent uh, culpability for the 2002 anti-Muslim riots in the state of Gujarat, where he was then chief minister. Now, this address to the Congress puts all of that behind, and it shows not only the American president, but American Congress is also committed to proper uh, relationships based on respect and dignity on both sides. You mentioned there that they're looking to strengthen the nuclear deal that's been languishing in recent years. What exactly will the strengthening of that deal mean? What will it entail? The strengthening of it would mean clearing up the possibility for American companies to build civilian nuclear reactors in India. They have been reticent because of the terrific liability laws that India had come up with for in case of accident, these are now being looked at in a manner which will make it easier for American companies to do business in India. Modi's been spending a lot of time outside of India recently, travelling a lot. Why does he have such a packed travel schedule? What's his uh, motivation here? The whole motivation is that India is uh, trying to do international business with a number of constituencies that are complex in character. For example, this last visit, which includes Afghanistan and Qatar, comes on the back of the visit to Iran. These are Islamic countries where India wants to keep good relations. And it's also a signal to them and to India's 150 million Muslims that though Narendra Modi is a Hindu nationalist and leads the Hindu nationalist BJP, Muslims of India are safe, and India is ready to do business with Islamic countries and the Islamic world. 
Okay, our Subrata Mitra, thank you very much for your insight. Thank you for your time.